Right, we're back to continue building our all-time Premier League eleven. You all right? Yeah. Just getting, it, just, just getting your script, getting your notes, your pre-prepared <laughs> stats and notes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need stats. person who's going to be attacking from the midfield for our all-time Premier League eleven. It's not Cesc Fabregas, he got 2%. It's not David Silva, 2%. It's not Lampard, 22%. It's not Paul Scholes, 25%, which means Mr. Steven Gerrard. What Gerrard, it means is you've got more Liverpool subscribers than anyone else. 46% of the vote, Steven Gerrard, will be, will be the man in centre mid. <laughs> I'm sure Paul throws his trophy cabinet shit himself. Yeah, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. I, I, I did. I, I, did I put. I definitely put Silver and Fabregas forward, so yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this week it's Premier League Strikers Part 2, uh, the second era of which is 2006 to present day, uh, to help mix it up a little bit and to ensure that we had a little. Bit, Henri got to mention, even though Henri had played like one season plus his return. Uh, in this in this era, he, he's been he's been he's been pushed into this category. Category. Same with Van Nistelrooy as well. We will. Um, Can I just ask a quick, very quick question? If this is part two. When did he find out when, who won part one? Next week, which is when we do the managers and okay. we look back <laughs> on the whole eleven. <laughs> just wanted to make that known. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good point. I'm glad we've got you. The managers, is that when we pick our assistant manager? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I'm going to say, well, how did he find out when the manager? Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. Um, so, uh, as ever, we're going to pick honourable mentions. So, yeah, turn your notifications on. <laughs> yeah, click the, little, click the bell. Uh, we're going to uh, pick our honourable mentions first, then our actual picks. Um, Chris Pajak, who is your honourable mention? I'm going to pick Fernando Torres as my honourable mention. Uh, Why only honourable? Because he's not good enough to get a proper mention. Basically, yeah. No, <laughs> look, because think, Chelsea. Because Chelsea, yeah. Mm. Now, um, look, it's Liverpool's Fernando Torres. I'm just going to say that right, right off the Shut. bat. Um, look, his goal record. You're not going to pick Chelsea, Chelsea? Torres, are you? No. He scored well, 20 and 110 yeah. for Chelsea. Couldn't, mm. couldn't deal with the price when he moved to a big club, could he? So, look, 65 <laughs> and 102 <laughs> for Liverpool. He wasn't signed as one of the best strikers in the world and he became, for me, the best striker in the world at Liverpool Football Club in the Premier League when there was other good forwards in the league as well. Um, it's just terrified defences. Yeah, it's worth mentioning that I think there'll be, there'll be people who obviously remember him more for the... The Chelsea, which is weird for me anyway, because I, I like I, he was the last, the last player that I was genuinely, genuinely upset by when we when when mm. when we saw because it it kind of told you a lot about where Liverpool were as a club. Sure, the, the fifty time. million in your back pocket was all right though. Well, it wasn't in my back pocket. That wasn't. Oh, I just got to not see Fernando pocket. Torres, and we lost one of our best songs as well at the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're concerned with the song. No, no, but it's important, isn't it? We had shit songs. Ever we used to get to bounce in a minute, and then we got to bounce in <laughs> and a minute. he scored. It was great. But the the Chelsea Fernando Torres, oh, we I think it's worth remembering when Chelsea bought him. Got injured. Well, yeah, but fifty million pounds at the time, everyone was going. It's a lot of money, but he was worth. He was yeah. seemingly yeah. worth it yeah. because he was so good. And everyone, apart from the people who watched Torres that season prior to that point, was shocked that he wasn't the same. The same guy. Um, so yeah, I mean, as you say, the, the, his, his goal return for Liverpool was phenomenal. He's up there with the fastest in terms of first of fifty goals as well. Um, he's up there with the likes of Ian Rush as well, which is which is genuinely phenomenal. Uh, no, I I, I I think Torres is a, is a great shout, but not. Um, Pedro, who's your honourable? Uh, Drogba. Drogba. 104 goals in 254 appearances. And that's for a player who was a target man, a back-to-goal striker, who I think for a little bit revolutionised what a striker. Well, he has, hasn't yeah. he? Because yeah. he's become that lone striker up front, which yeah. we've all sort of hung our hats yeah. on now. Um, and he could occupy three, four defenders at the same time. He was strong, he was pacey. He would let you know he was in the game, but and also then he would cry like a wee bitch every time someone touched him. People <laughs> yeah. say the same about you, but we don't. Quite have <laughs> yet. Yeah, well, yeah, only for referees. Comments. Where do everyone about comments? I don't give a fuck about comments. Um, um, yeah, and he, Liam he just likes shouting not, at, not the negative ones. Shouting at I just like shouting at people, and, yeah. it, and he just he, he could score amazing goals as well. Yeah, yeah. Score every kind of goal. Yeah, so I, I big agree. Three I, kicks. Yeah. 
I, so. I agree, I totally agree on the Drogba thing and that you're right. I think he, we've talked on this, this show a few times about guys who redefine roles mm. and I totally agree with that. Yeah. Everyone was looking for, and people are still looking for the next Didier Drogba. Exactly what you're saying there. And people, when we talk about, we talk about Lukaku, we go, oh yeah, he is. He's not. He hasn't got that. He, he doesn't bring players into you know mm. into the game the same way that Drogba did. You say the back to goal thing, the touch, and 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 it's an underrated cause. It's one I I, I loathe them for when we played against them. You say the the diving thing, mm. you know, diving, winning free kicks. It's not. It's up there as well, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's in not, his head. It's not cool. It's not something you want. You want it. You want to be a part of the game. But if you if it is a part of the game. And it means your team get free kicks and danger. Look, Liverpool had it with Suarez. It's a, it's a, it's he, an asset to you. And he always turned up in big, ga- big games as well. Yeah, always. That can not that can't it's be said. The European Cup final when he got sent off. That can't be said for everyone. No. Mm. I look, yeah. I look at the strikers that you've put on this list, Paul. And apart from the one that I picked for my pick, he's the guy. Drug was the guy that I would hate Liverpool coming up against more than any yeah. of the others. Mm. I know, therefore, yeah, okay, that's cool. I know you've picked now because I've just looked at the list and it all makes sense. Um, <laughs> Liam? The Destroy Mate, 95 and 149. Kind of speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yeah, phenomenal. I was gutted, absolutely gutted when he fell out with Ferguson because he was 30 goals a season, guaranteed. Doesn't matter how many games. He could play one game, score 30 goals a season. <laughs> <laughs> but no, honestly, though, he was just fantastic. Back to goal, running in behind defences, doesn't matter where. It helped that he had David Beckham on the right-hand side putting the ball on his, on his feet no matter where he was in the pitch, but... I mean, I think his goal-scoring goal record speaks for itself. It's really phenomenal centre-forward. And this is a guy who he does cruise shit the year before he joined yeah. as well. You know, and that could have Publicly. been the end. Of, you know, I, exactly I, like, I yeah, don't think, up until Ibrahimovic, sorry, we haven't had a centre-forward, an actual centre-forward in number nine in that mould since since Finistroy. Yeah, no. He was one of those. The, 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 actually, one of the other ones similar to what you thought about. Van Nistelrooy, he, he just used to score against us. He'd turn yeah. up and he'd have great performance at Liverpool and you'd look at him. And, and also... Like Chapman at 102 around that time as well. He was <laughs> absolutely unbelievable. And it's one of them that you'd always thought, yeah, you know, if you could have the complete centre forward, mm. yeah, Van Nistelrooy yeah. would be in there. Um, right, so my honourable mention, I, I, I've done the honourable thing and let you guys all pick yours first, of course. So I'm stuck with. <laughs> I say stuck with. Now, I will go with. Um, I'm going to go with Sergio Aguero. No, it's it's always a struggle to get these guys across the line when they're currently playing because you know it, it's hard. It'll be easier to look back Especially on Aguero. When you don't put them as, as you pick. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. too. It's but gonna it's be e- a struggle. It's yeah, easier it's to look back on, but it's easier to look back on guys. <laughs> it'll be easier to look back on Aguero in three or four years time when he's retired, and I think he'll be able to go. He's I think he'll be in three years. <coughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Okay. Is he not? Do you not say he was uh, finishing his contract with City and going back to Argentina? Am I wrong? Yeah, but Help the boy speak. Come on, come on. Then he might go to China after that. We've sidetracked him for no reason here. Why do you not... We should title this video Guerrero's Retiring. Guerrero's Retiring. Imagine how he views this. The point is, he's he's like 29, 30. He's not got too many years Is he 29 or 30? He's 29. (laughs) Going on 30. Playing for his cities, playing for his Argentinas, playing for his... Oh, what did you say, Liam? Did you say he finished fourth or did he finish sixth? Did it was fifth, fifth, the same as fourth or sixth? Was it? That was like two weeks ago. He's still banging on the way back to the pitch. He's got 47s and 92s. 115 in 162. 115-ish in 162-ish. <laughs> exactly 115 goals in exactly 162 Premier League appearances for Manchester City. Um, and if, again, in... Three years time. Whenever he leaves the Premier League, <laughs> <laughs> whenever that may be. What if he leaves City for another Premier League team? Whenever he leaves the Premier League, we'll be able to look back on him, and I think he will. He will. People will undoubtedly put him in. Should these, we revisit put him in this then? Then, in fact, I think Henri would get booted down <laughs> to the previous era, as would Van Nistelrooy comfortably, um, and I think Aguero would almost undoubtedly win this. Um, in all seriousness, if he wasn't a City player, he'd be my pick. Yeah. Really, I think he's the best, the best, certainly at the minute anyway. I mean, we think of the amount of injuries he's had and he's consistently scored 25, 26, 27 goals a year, hasn't he? He's mm-hmm. an unbelievable centre forward. Yeah, He exactly. knows where the goal is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's how you do it, Paul. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cheers, Chris. Yeah, so there you go. Um, who's your pick, Chris? Well, um, Thierry Henry. Absolutely, it's got to be Thierry Henry. I know he probably shouldn't be in this category, but you've put him in this category. He scored 175 and 258 in Arsenal. He played four times the second spell. We've included both spell. He scored 174 and 254 appearances for Arsenal that first spell. He won two Premier Leagues, two FA Cups. He was world um, runner-up 
World Player of the Year twice, I think it was. Um, Football Writers Association Football of the Year three times for the Premier League. Euro Golden Boot winner twice. He scored 17, 17, 24, 24, 30, 25, 27 across a seven-year span in the Premier League. But he's a five. Five. He was the first player to score more than 20 goals. In Premier League history, he was the first player to score more than 20 Premier League goals five times on the bounce. Wow. His missus still left him though. It didn't matter. And he's still a shit. But he had Vafa Foom, so he was, he was unbelievable. And, and he would tear the every most, defense. You know what the most unbelievable thing about Thierry and me? Is that, that he I would drive a Renault clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. I, I, went to, I went to see Monaco against FC Sosho in Monaco before he, the season before he signed for Arsenal. He scored two goals as Monaco beat them 4 1. season before he played for Before Juventus. he signed for. Oh, see, sorry, when he went to Juventus. So before that. Um, so yeah, he went to UV for 11, he had one season there, didn't he? He went to Arsenal and I, he scored two goals and he was shit. Like yeah. he, he should After have, all that! He should have <laughs> scored eight goals and when he signed for Arsenal, I remember turning around, maybe it was you and a few of the other lads and stuff, I was like, this guy is one of the shittest, most overrated there, strikers Chris. you will ever see. And I now I'm putting, him, forward. Shock now of them, I am though, putting him forward as my best in <coughs> the league strike. And, right, and rightly so. He was, that, that thing about France 98, France just had a bunch of centre forwards mm. who all looked incapable of, of consistently consistently scoring. It was one played for you. Yeah. 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 Can't remember his name. Just I thought you might say. Because what Bernard Diemer? Yeah, he was a winger, but close. Yeah. Um, was it a guy and Bill Tord or something? something? My pick is um, Van Persie. Robin Van Persie. Robin Van Persie. I was shocked by his goal return actually for Arsenal. I think, I, think I, I knew he, he scored a lot of goals for Man United, but I, I, I'm amazed how many goals he actually scored in, in, in the. A Premier one League. and two striker who really is a number ten, but but played like a number nine. Yeah. If that makes sense. He had mm. the attributes of both players. Now I picked for my other one. I picked Dennis Bergkamp for my older. So they're sort of in the same mould. But Van Persie is almost like the next evolution of him yeah. he's a number 10 who could score goals as well you never knew what he was going to do you never knew who he was going to be he'd score some fantastic goals you knew what he was going to do Ped. he yeah, was going to put score. it on his light, left foot and, and score a goal top in which he did many a time and the fact that I mean when he was at Arsenal he had terrible injury problems I don't know what the deal was I don't know whether what, it's, it's, you're playing for Arsenal so you're going to get injured at know, some stage I don't know it what tends that to was. be the general consensus I don't know what, why they couldn't get a full season out of him but then Man United Sir Alex Ferguson being Sir Alex Ferguson picked up a phone like no one else would. Like I don't even think anyone else would pick up the phone and say, are you prepared to sell this player? And amazingly, because obviously he was in his last season, wasn't he, of his contract, they were prepared to sell him for 20 million. He's gone there and he's won Man United the league. Exactly. In, he won us the in, in, in Sir Alex's last season as well, I took that risk knowing that it would pay off. Yeah. And he, and, and, he was, a, he was brilliant at Man United. And I remember being 2 0 down away at Southampton. He scored a hat trick in 25 minutes or something. He's like, fuck me, what a player. Yeah. But he'd do that as well. He'd have a very quiet game and suddenly just spark into life. He's another one, isn't he? I think he redefined the role. Because Ferguson called him like a nine and a half, didn't he? He said him and Mooney and <laughs> a nine and a half. They don't, neither of them is a genuinely the line guy, but they're also not the, the, the guy who sits in the mm. ten. And we've seen a lot more of the, the, the false nine almost, haven't we? No, I, I agree. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Um, Liam, who's yours? If I'm being honest, I really wanted Van, Nist- or Van Persie, sorry, but uh, Peg got there in front of me. But uh, the next guy that I'm going to pick, it's probably a little bit controversial given his, uh, his recent performances, but Wayne Rooney. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wayne Rooney has been, since 17, has been one of the best strikers in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, I mean, many goals in, in games, is it? Well, he's top goal scorer for Man United, top goal scorer for England. If that doesn't scream unbelievable centre forward, I don't know what does. 180 and 386, so one and two, and 15 and 67 for Everton when he was about 17. I think he just turned 17, hadn't he? Yeah. Uh, besides the goal he scores, it's his link up play as well. I know he was playing with Ronaldo for a, for, a, <laughs> for a considerable amount of time, but I mean, records don't lie. Has the highest goal score for Man United and highest goal score for England? He's one of those, isn't he? That if he'd. I think if he'd moved abroad a couple of years ago, or he'd gone another move, or whatever, like like I say, given context to things, mm. he's had the, he's had to suffer the indignity of being like, not being John Lennon, being Paul McCartney instead of having to continue on at Man United, being a bit of a I say a bit of a waiting power. He's still banging goals in yeah. when he gets the opportunities, isn't he? Um, it's a shame we were talking about this through the week, weren't we, about how 
about Asian internationals for England and what have you now. And for another country, he probably be, he probably be more respected. Whereas everyone in England loves to build people up mm -hmm. just to just to knock them down. I don't like don't particularly like Wayne Rooney. I wouldn't have him myself, but. I agree with what you're saying there. You can't fault his, can't fault his goal with him. Played in so many different positions time. as well, didn't yeah. he? He was always like, literally was when he played with Ronaldo, he, he, he shifted onto the wing, but how many goals didn't did he set up? Yeah. But how many goals did he set up for and still is the top goal scorer at Man United? Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. absolutely. Um, so it falls on me to, to pick Luis Suarez. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 69 and 110 for Liverpool and it's worth noting that he hit the, he hit the woodwork another 69 times uh, in that period as well um, it's a shame first season wasn't it that was just in his first season um, the thing about Luis Suarez and I it's a, it's a, hampered his case is hampered only by the number of games he played you know and, and if he'd done another season with Liverpool I think it would be it would be a much stronger case between him and Thierry Omri and I think the, Thierry Henry is the only other one I think can legitimately be held up uh, alongside of our of our main pick simply because Thierry Henry, you could argue, was if not the best player in the world at the time, was in that very small bracket of the truly uber elite players yeah. along with Ronaldinho. I, I think you'd say at the, at the time, and you could maybe make a case for do you want to make a case for Totti or, or whatever. Um, and I think similarly, Luis Suarez. But when we first used to say it, he's the third best player in the world, people would laugh like half third. Why would you say third? Because of course Messi and Ronaldo are are there. But I think in terms of his goal return and his, his, his individual uh, ability to improve the team, it's not like to say Steven Gerrard dragged teams through. Suarez dragged. Scored the goals, but also dragged the level of everyone, one else up around him. And you know, I, I, I think if you if he came back to the Premier League now, so why he brought the level down by baiting people and all sorts. No, there was, there was a difference between. No, no, okay. I, 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 look, I, can't I think you can argue brought the game into this, the, the, the club into disrepute and all that stuff around him. But take that and put just look at his football ability. Yeah. Buying Luis Suarez, any team that wants to buy Luis Suarez in the Premier League next season would be buying themselves the title. You know what I mean? Within reason, if, if, if you know, Stoke bought him, that probably would be a bit of a stretch. You, you, take, you take my point on that. Luis Suarez was, I've seen Steven Gerrard, I've seen Kenny Dalglish, yeah. I've seen <clears throat> some of the best players ever to play the game in front of me at Anfield. Suarez is, the, if for me, is the best player I've ever seen. I've yeah. ever seen play football. So Be great. Best best player I've ever seen at Liverpool, you know, in 25 years watching the match. Like. Yeah. He did things that you would just be like, what? Are you for real, like? Mm -hmm. And he was so consistent as well. Yeah, you just couldn't believe it. Can't deny his ability. I hear him as a human being. Didn't say penalties. Doesn't say penalties but, as well. But you know, which is worth putting out in terms of his goal return. Could have added. You could add the amount of penalties he won. <laughs> you could have added. Took yeah, and you know free kick taken, set piece taken. Brilliant, absolutely unbelievable footballer with a weird tendency to bite <laughs> and. Allegedly racially abused people. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, you say allegedly, but it was proven. So. Yeah. Um, so, of the honourable mentions. Just notice he scored less goals than Lukaku, though, so. Yeah. <laughs> of the honourable mentions, who do we feel is the strongest the case to be the fifth the vote? Well, why didn't you pick Lukaku? Because it wasn't on the list. It's never stopped, stopped you before. before. Fucking Baines. But Baines, Baines is the second best left back ever. Okay. Of the honourable mentions that you've all put forward, mm. who do we feel is, is most worthy of the fifth who choice for people to vote? Mine. Who was yours? Drogba. Drogba. Hey, Drogba. Drogba, Aguero. I'll never pick Aguero, Drogba. Van Nistelrooy, did you pick? I picked Torres. And Torres. I'll go with, you know what, I, I, I often pick my own one in this. I will give it to Didier Drogba, um, the, the, the last vote. <laughs> Rats. Um, Only for his sheer longevity but I, I, I can say I think in a couple of years time with the hindsight I think Aguero absolutely makes sense this list but there you go if you want to vote for your best Premier League striker from the era of 2006 to 2017 you can <laughs> put the eye in the corner screen there's your five votes if you want any more thoughts <laughs> players that we I can't start. believe you had a meeting about this and decided to cap it at 2006 and then threw three players in from before blame James I'm still waiting for Chris Sutton to get a shout Chris Sutton I know you won't be, won't be on this episode well no there you go he's just had a shout um, thoughts on any players we've missed as well in the comments below give this video a thumbs up subscribe and check back here next week we're going to be wrapping up the series picking the managers and looking at our finished 11th